Welcome to the seven productivity hacks for a better end of financial year webinar. I'm going to now welcome today's moderator into the conversation. Welcome, Gavin. Hi. Hi, Linda, and hello to everyone listening in for today's webinar. Today's webinar is a sponsored webinar, and it's titled Se Seven Productivity Hacks for a More Efficient Tax System. Uh, we're grateful for the sponsorship of Intuit, and CPS Jerry is hosting today's event. My name is Gavin Ord. I am the Senior Manager of Business Policy at CPA Australia. We have people joining us from all over the world for today's webinar, and I welcome you to today's webinar. But first of all, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners from around Australia and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I extend this acknowledgement to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who may be joining us today. It's now my pleasure to begin today's presentation by handing over to Damien Greathead from Intuit. Welcome, Damien. Thank you very much and thank you, Linda. And just hopefully you can hear me loud and clear, but delighted to be here today. Got a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So delighted to be here today, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about productivity hacks for a more efficient tax season. Um, sort of as we come through the pandemic and where 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 I, th I think dealing with one of the most prolonged tax seasons that we we've had in a long time. Um, what we're doing today is talking about things that we can take a step back uh, of our own systems, our processes, and see where we can make efficiency gains so that we can have a better year round, so that we can deal with our clients more efficiently, so that we can give our uh, our team uh, that um, that work life balance that is so important and is so critical now. So over the next fifty minutes, we're going to talk about a number of productivity hacks which. I've seen work in accounting firms. Uh, and if you do have any specific questions about the particular hacks, the particular exercises that we'll be talking through, feel free to reach out to me. My email's down the bottom there, Damien underscore greathead at intuit.com. I'll do my best to get through as many questions as possible today. But of course, if anything comes up after today's webinar, as you're thinking about it, feel free to reach out um, to me. A little bit about myself. I've worked in the, the accounting industry for, for more than 15 years. Um, my first job out of university was working for a company called Principer, and I, I worked under a guy called Rick Payne, who was responsible for the results accountant uh, accountant's bootcamp, um, and learned an enormous amount through him um, about the, the opportunities that accountants have to make a difference in the small, medium-sized businesses uh, of their community. And, and, and that really instilled a passion within me to continue working within the accounting industry. Moved to the United States and, and um, started a membership group for small, medium-sized um, accountants with a guy called Chris Fredrickson. Um, and we built that to about 1,000 members across the US, but really focused on small, medium-sized firms and helping them with technology adoption, helping them with marketing and sales strategies, uh, and helping them with their, uh, their, their strategic planning process to make sure they remain re relevant and competitive into the future. Um, as a part of that, I was working with a guy called Chris Fredrickson, and he actually had a, a CPA practice. Um, and I did a number of years in the CPA practice as well. What I realized is um, I'm not a good accountant. I'm not a good tax accountant. I'm not a good bookkeeper. Um, what I did really enjoy, however, working with the clients of Fredrickson and Crawford was sitting down and helping them understand the numbers uh, that sat behind their business, helping them understand those, helping them make better business decisions. So that advisory side of things got me really excited. I must admit I wasn't great on the compliance side, but the the, the value, the, the advisory side is where I really enjoyed things. The other side of the, the, the accounting practice, which I really enjoyed, was the technology um, and looking at the technology that was coming down the pipeline in terms of cloud technology, moving our firm off desktop legacy systems onto cloud-based systems. We made sure that we were always the guinea pig before we talked to uh, our clients about it. So we were using things like uh, like Zero, like QuickBooks Online, like uh, like Receipt Bank, like. Um, uh, quick, um, it, it's QuickBooks Time now, like T-Sheets, all of these web-based products um, well and truly uh, at the forefront of them coming out. And um, from Fredericks and Crawford and 2020 Group went on to open the US office of Receipt Bank um, and 15 years later decided to move back to Australia 
um, my wife and I and, and our six month old. Uh, and now I'm the marketing lead for the accountant and advisor segment uh, at Intuit Australia. So really excited. I've been in this position for, for about six, seven months now um, and really enjoying learning more and more about the Australian market and seeing the similarities and the differences between the US market and the, uh, and the Australian market. Um, what I do want to tick off with is First and foremost, actually saying thank you. Um, late last year, uh, QuickBooks, we, we did a study and we, we went out to um, uh, small business owners and we asked them about the impact that their accountant and bookkeeper had had on their business over the last uh, over the last 18, 24 months. Um, I think the results were really powerful. Uh, and I just wanted to share a couple of those with you today before we do kick on. Um, I think you know this, but it's really powerful that the actual SMB uh, SMB clients are saying that saying, uh, reiterating and confirming everything that we know, and, and more importantly, that they are saying thank you. And so some of the stats from our advocating for advisors study to, to come out recently, more than half of the survey respondents so about 600 SMBs that we went out to survey more than half 57% of them said that they would have struggled to keep going without their bookkeeper or accountant support over the past 4 months. Um, more than half, 54% of small business leaders actively sought more financial advice in the last year than they have previously. Um, and 54% have made an additional $60,000 or more um, thanks to the help of these professionals. So there's a whole bunch more stats in the Advocating for Advisors ebook, and you can download that at Accountants Daily. But what I wanted to do was just uh, say thank you to accountants and bookkeepers across the country who have played an integral role with keeping small business alive uh, over the last 18 to 24 months. We're not out of the thick of it by any means, um, but, it, but it is really important that, that, that you know uh, that your clients are incredibly appreciative of the hard work that you have been doing to help them um, help them survive. Um, and as we sort of look at the floods in, in, in Queensland and New South Wales, again, it's, if it's not the pandemic, it's something, but, but again, accountants and, and bookkeepers have a really important role to play in the success of small business. And I just wanted to take a minute to, or two to acknowledge that and, and just also share what the SMB customers, SMB clients are actually saying about their accountants. So, as I said, you can download the ebook from, uh, from accountants daily and have a look through some of those different stats. What I would like to do quickly is just talk about QuickBooks um, and who we are. Um, we've been in the, the Australian market for a long time, but it's, it's really only in the last uh, five to seven years where QuickBooks Online has become its, 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 own, its own entity and, it, and its own um, being. Um, we are the world's leading small business financial management solution, and we're used by more than 5.1 million small businesses around the world. For accountants and bookkeepers, we have QuickBooks Online Accountant, which is used by more than 300,000 accountants and bookkeepers around the world to manage their practice uh, and their clients. What's really important as well is we have a growing suite of tools, and over the past 18 months, we've continued to add to this suite of tools for accountants and bookkeepers specifically. Um, QuickBooks Online Accountant has created efficiencies for accountants and bookkeepers, helping them to manage their clients, their workflow, track their time and billing virtually, and all in one place. QuickBooks Payroll, powered by KeyPay, is one of the market-leading payroll service providers that syncs seamlessly with QuickBooks Online. And last but not least, um, we're helping streamline the year-end compliance with QuickBooks Tax, powered by Logit to support firms to manage, prepare, lodge BAS and, and their, their tax returns as well. The electronic signature feature enables firms to get important documentation signed quickly by their clients, regardless of their lockdown status. So I, I wanted to, to, to stress that I know you've been busy working hard to help small business clients, but I also wanted to say that we at QuickBooks have been working hard to help support um, our accountants and bookkeepers as well with a growing suite of tools uh, that are designed to help streamline and make your, your business more efficient and more productive. And really, that's what today's webinar is all about. The end of financial year is coming. It's despite floods, despite pandemic, it's one of the things that we can, uh, that, that we can be assured of that, that uh, at June 30, the end of financial year will be here. Um, and, and there will be work to do. Uh, and so what we're looking at today is what are the areas of our practice of our firm 
uh, that we can focus on over the next couple of months to, to streamline, save time, deliver a better experience for your team, deliver a better experience for your clients, uh, touch on pricing. And, and basically, I hope at the end of today's webinar, you'll come out with three or four different areas that you want to work on um, and a, a plan or an action plan of sorts that will help you focus on those so we can get going on them. But there are a number of areas of your practice. You won't be able to nail all of them. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. But over today's uh, session, we'll talk about a number of different things that fall into the banner of process, technology, team experience, pricing, client experience, and hopefully um, you'll be able to say, look, we've got that one taken care of, no problems, but let's actually think about our client experience. We're really good on pricing, but let's actually think about our, our client experience or our team experience or whatever it is. And so that's really what I, I hope that we get out of uh, today's session. So why don't we kick off with a poll question, Linda, and, and ask the audience, what's your biggest challenge? What's the biggest challenge you face during tax season? Is it disorganized late clients? Is it tracking workflow? Is it efficiently processing client data, getting paid or something else? So um, we'll open the, the responses there. What, what's your biggest challenge uh, coming into tax season um, for you? Okay, people are putting in their responses there, Damien. Just so that everyone's aware, the poll questions are anonymous, so please feel free to participate. I'll close it off in about 10 seconds. Thanks, Damien. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Linda. Probably could have been an option for all of the above as well, um, but hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, but is one of these things specifically on your mind as we're going through? And I think that poll is now closed, so hopefully we will get to see the results. Uh, so coming in at, well, no surprises there, about 25% of the, uh, the audience says disorganized and late clients. Um, okay, that's really good because we've got a couple of things that we can talk about to help focus uh, getting our clients organized and more timely. Uh, C for 20% uh, efficiently processing client data. Again, we're going to focus on that, talk about some technology, talk about some workflow and process that is also going to help that as well. Um, and then number three, uh, tracking workflow at 12%. Okay, so I think that getting paid, delighted to see that's not an issue. Something else, we've got some folks that are that are corporate accountants, uh, et cetera. So feel free to pop those into the, the chat section as well. But thank you very much. And and <laughs> the unfortunate thing is our clients love you, but they're also the the, the some of sometimes the bane of uh, the bane of our uh, our day to day. So let's get going with hack number one. And this is really important, folks. We've got to do an audit of our workflow before we can hack it and, and pull it apart and, and put things in. We, we've got to work out what's working and what's not working. And so what I want to talk about with this, this first section is how do we actually go about doing a workflow audit? Um, because again, this is the perfect time of year to take a step back, um, have a think about of the different areas of our practice, what are we really going to focus on? As I said, we can't do it all, so what are we going to focus on? This is a really simple way of doing process mapping, and I would really encourage you that if you haven't done a process mapping session with your team for your for your activities, for your tasks, for your uh, for your jobs, I would I would highly recommend that you get the team. Um, into a, a virtual session in um, in person. Post-it notes are incredibly helpful here. Um, mural boards and, and there's a whole bunch of collaboration activities on Zoom or Cisco or, or whatever it is, uh, the tools that you're using, Microsoft Teams, that will enable this to happen. But basically what we're looking at is where we want to look at where does the job start? How does it start? And who's actually doing it? And we really want to map step by step what happens as as the work or the data moves its way through the office. And so here is a very simple example uh, where we, we start with the collection of documents and we work our way through to step seven, which is the preparation of financial statements. I actually don't think that this is as comprehensive as it could be. I think there's a whole bunch of subtasks that sit within this. But if you haven't done this with your team, even individually, if you're more a, a smaller sole practitioner, uh, it's a really important process to have a look at where does the documents, where does the data start? 
who touches it, what do they do with it, and how does it work its way through the office, through the different, uh, through the different technology systems. So a simple way, who's doing it, what are they doing, what are the tasks, and what are the expected outcomes. Then we go on to what is the next step. And it's really important that we do this um, because then we can identify roles and responsibilities at that who level. Then we can look at what are the things that we're actually doing and the tasks and what. This is where we talk about that efficiently processing data. As we're looking at those, I'll just go back, the what, what is it that we're doing, the activities and the tasks. Uh, associated with it, this is where we've actually got to look at what it is that we're doing. Are we handling any paper? Are we doing any data entry? Um, is there any duplicate data entry? Uh, is the correct person doing the work? And, and I think these are some of the questions that we can sit down with our team and work through to see if we're being as efficient as possible. And if you've answered yes, to any paper, any data entry, any duplicate data entry, then there's an opportunity for efficiency gains. Um, if you've answered no to the correct person doing the work, we've got to ask our question why? And is that because people are incredibly difficult to find? Uh, or is that because we haven't leveraged technology correctly to take care of it? Or could we better leverage technology to take care of it? So if we're thinking about the efficient process of data, the biggest, the, the, the biggest sucks the biggest uh, time um, sucks are uh, if we've got to touch paper and if we've got to do any data entry. And then actually another one that we can look on, if we've actually just got to manage the tasks and find out what is the status. Um, and uh, if we're doing that with spreadsheets, if we're doing that with anything but a, a, a good workflow tool, I think there's opportunities for efficiency gains straight out of the gate. So what we want to do is if we think about the, 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 uh, the process map that we were looking at now, what we've got to find is if we have answered yes to any of those questions, um, we've got to think, is there technology out there that will help us take care of that? Is there technology that will help us better collect the documents uh, and organize the documents? Is there better technology that will help read the documents than populate the appropriate software? Uh, whether that's a tax software, whether that's the, the general ledger software, there's a whole bunch of tools that are out there. And as I said, I used to work at Receipt Bank, and that took the the information from the invoices and the the, the receipts, uh, the credit notes, and then put it into the general ledger, which obviously would then help to to facilitate the the end part of the the financial statements and, and tax, etc. Another area where we see an enormous um, uh, time suck is where we actually manually key data into our top tax software, our general ledger software it might be highly automated, but if it's not integrated with our tax software, then we've got some issues. And I know that a lot of uh, a lot of softwares you can download and upload, but are there ways in which we can better integrate so it's seamless with one click? I don't get me wrong. Download is one click. Upload is another click. It, it's not a big issue, but where are opportunities for closer integration within our applications. And what will happen is if you sit down and do this exercise, you will actually create a, another box that sits below this and talks about technology. You might already have some technology in your um, in your office at the moment. You may not be getting the most out of it. Uh, so there's an opportunity for us to see can we get more juice out of out of the tools that we currently have, or do we need to go out to the to the marketplace to find out what other tools are available to help us collect documents, to help post entries to the ledger, to help move that information into the tax software? Um, now is the time to be doing that and investigating that. And if I, I if you've got some some people in the team, let's get them together, form a committee where we go through this process, and this is where we're going to identify a whole bunch of opportunities for improvement in efficiency. So tech, uh, number two, we go on to our technology audit. So before we do our technology audit, we just need to do our workflow audit. That's what's really critical to make sure that we understand all the steps uh, in our process and make sure we can see where, where there's opportunity for us to make improvements. And you'll be surprised, small improvements across a, a significant client base, they will add up to a, a, a big time saving, a big stress relief. Uh, and you might just wanna focus on 
and I'll just go back there. You might just want to focus on document collection. 25% um, of the audience saying clients are disorganized and late. So what's the technology that we can capture the, the, the source data from our clients more efficiently um, and, and get that into us in a much more timely manner so we can get going earlier? Because I, I find that that's it. The, as I said, um, the, the, the deadlines don't shift, but but when the clients uh, get information into us, it seems to be later and later and later, which just squeezes and compresses our time and our stress levels. So now what we've got to do is we've got to look at the technology that our clients are using. What's the client? What's the technology that we have put in our clients hands? I want you to really think about your role quite differently. Um, and one of the analogies that has been seems to be becoming clearer and clearer to me is that the, 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 the role of the accountant is more the role of controller. And it's not controller necessarily in that traditional sense in terms of the financial controller. That's obviously a really important part. But I think a really different way to think about this, and we've got the map there of the Sydney um, the, the Sydney Railway Network that was uh, that was um, uh, on uh, out of service for a couple of days, a couple of weeks back. But think about your role as the data controller, as the data controller. Um, sorry, that's fifteen years of being in the US saying data rather than data. But I, I think this is a really um, helpful way to think about your role, helpful way to explain uh, your clients uh, to your clients your actual role. So rather than just tax and compliance, we're controlling the data of your business. We're controlling the data of your of your individual of your tax situation of your financial process. Um, so what we've got to ask ourselves is. What is the data that we need to, to fulfill that end goal, to fulfill the, um, the, the, that final output? And where are we going to get all of that data from? Because what we can do, like this train, train map here, is we can integrate these systems so that the data flows efficiently and so that the data flows without manual data entry or duplication of, uh, of systems and processes. Um, as I was getting myself through uni, this is way back when um, I was managing a, a pub and just payroll was an absolutely awful experience because you actually had to manually process information two and three times before you got it in to the actual payroll uh, system. Um, and obviously that was you know 15 plus years ago and times have changed. But it is really surprising how many times we, I go into businesses and, and you see very manual processes uh, to, to collect information such as time. So think about all of the data that you need uh, to get your clients information, the outputs. And now what we wanna do is we wanna think about what are those requirements, the GL data, receipts and bills, the, the actual documentation, payroll data, maybe time. There's also the bank and loan documents and, and investment statements and that type of stuff. So uh, there's a whole bunch of data that you need in a timely manner to get get started on, on the processing of the information. You know, um, the, the, the second highest response there was efficient processing of data. It's really important that we process that data efficiently, but if, if we can get it uh, sooner and get working on it sooner, that's going to have a knock on effect down the entire, the, the entire way. So again, this list is not exhaustive by any means, but what it does is it gets you thinking about all of the different data sources that I need to complete my clients monthly, quarterly, uh, annual um, uh, compliance requirements, management requirements. So now I need to think about all of these different uh, sources of data and how we controlling that information, a bit like that, um, that, that uh, Sydney train map, how are we acting as the, the controller of that data, making sure the information is flowing in efficiently? And, and I, I'll, I'll lean on the, the, that old saying, is there an app for that? Going back to the, the Apple, uh, there's an app for that, the App Store. Um, I've got there the QuickBooks apps.com. Uh, there's a whole bunch of apps that are out there, but Xero has an app marketplace. Um, Myob have an app marketplace. Uh, Sage Intact has a, 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 um, a an app marketplace. And, and basically they're all designed to bring all of these applications that you need for the data collection 
um, to to flow seamlessly into, in this instance, into the general ledger. So I would encourage you to have a think about that list. What I typically do when I work with firms on this is we would just create a spreadsheet of all of the different data points that we need and how we're currently collecting it. So the first column, it just works through all of the different data sources that we that we need to fulfill if we're doing payroll for them, if we're doing tax for them, if we're doing monthly reporting for them, we have um, the, the the service in the first column, the, tar the, the, the data that we need to, to provide that service. And then basically what we've got is a matrix of the different applications that we're using to collect that data. Um, more often than not, when we start working with a firm, we can see a lot of legacy um, Excel uh, manual processes that facilitate this flow of information. And then what we do is we look at, okay, where's the biggest opportunity for us? And what are the applications that are out there? And, and then from that process, uh, let's just say, uh, we're, we're thinking about time, typically two, three or four um, applications come up which will then go and investigate and identify what is the right one for your client's industry, what is the right one for, for your firm, what do you have capability and capacity support as well, so what are your expertise. But there is a whole ecosystem of applications out there that facilitate this flow of information and uh, receipts and bills are really just one very small part of it, but if we're looking at inventory, if we're looking uh, at point of sale, um, if we're looking at e-commerce, there's a whole suite of, of tools that we can plug together so that this information will flow seamlessly so that we can get the information off our clients in a much more timely and most importantly, organized manner. Um, think about e-commerce. If you've got some e-commerce clients and they're doing hundreds of transactions a day or a week, that's a lot of organized station and, and looking at that so your 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 a2x and your your applications like that that are going to to organize all of that information before it comes into the general ledger are really important and it's going to save you an enormous amount of time throughout the entire process if we can get that front end front of office um, uh, working out so we've talked about the uh, client facing. I'm gonna call that the front office, the front of house. So that's the actual client experience. Are we putting the tools in our client's hands that make it easy to get the information to us? Or are we a little bit uh, old school and a little bit dated and, and, and asking for, for Excel files, backup files, and, and or, or alternatively, is our client coming to us with those? This is a, a really good opportunity for us to add some value to the client relationships and go out to them and say, look, I can make your life infinitely easier with a couple of apps. Not all 15 of them, but here are two or three apps that are going to help save you time and get us the information that we need in a timely manner, which means we can process your information much more promptly uh, and get that, uh, get that, get that return filed, uh, get those reports back to you, et cetera, et cetera. So I want you to start using this application and here's why it's going to help you. You don't really need to, to, to lean on the, this is what's in it for me, as in it helps make helps my job easier, but focus on this is what's in it for you. It's going to make your life easier. It's going to save your time, save you time. And, and I think importantly, it's going to mean that there's less calls from us bugging you. So I know you're on your mobile phone um, running many aspects of your business. Here's just another one, uh, another app that we can use to facilitate this flow of information. So that's the client side, that's that client experience. And how do we make sure that it's a pleasant experience and a world-class experience of the information that we need coming from them in a timely manner? The, the, the sort of the, the, the idea of real-time accounting, I don't think it's necessarily uh, real time, but certainly within 48, 72 hours, I've seen firms uh, providing that level of service in terms of real-time accounting, but they've got a, a very slick ecosystem of applications that are collecting the data and processing the data and moving it to the accounting firm for, for review in a very efficient process. So again, we may not be getting out and putting 15 applications in, but there's an opportunity to talk to our clients about one or two areas of their business uh, that might be your core frustration, but uh, if it's your core frustration, it's likely up there on their list of, of, of issues and challenges. So hack number three, uh, we've got to do a technology audit of our own back office. 
Um, so we talked about front of house. Now we've got to look at our own back office. And just as we talked about the different data sources of our clients, now we're actually going to think about what are the process requirements in our business? Um, yes, we have the same data requirements. We've got bills and expenses. We've got, we might have time. Um, we've probably got project management, et cetera. So we, we've got those sources of data, but what's actually really important in accounting firm is what are the applications and what's the technology and what are the processes and procedures that run our back office? Uh, workflow and task management is, is, a, is a, I, I think, one of the biggest opportunities for accounting firms to, to save time and have a much more efficient uh, tax season. There's a whole bunch of workflow and task management tools, and, and I'll show you a bit of a matrix about how we can make the right decision for us. But workflow is a big one. It's a big undertaking. Uh, I, I, as I was putting this presentation together, I, I sort of recognized that hacks uh, are, are often short, quick things, quick fixes, quick band-aids that um, that you can that you can put on on different areas. And there are certain quick fixes across this presentation. But what we are talking about here is identifying real structural parts of our business that we can work on. So a couple of the process requirements. And again, I would start on that Excel spreadsheet or, or um, Google sheet, working our way down, uh, workflow task management, engagement letters, document storage, time. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of time. I'm not one that says trash the timesheets. I think it's a wonderful productivity tool just to see if we're actually processing the information in a more efficient manner to make sure our team is learning. So I, I don't think we should be um, pricing off the timesheet, but I think it's a, a really good way of just making sure that we are getting better each and every time we do things. Is the technology actually delivering on the promise of saved time? Um, so, so uh, the the books review feature in in QuickBooks, the accountants um, have told us that it's helping them save up to forty minutes per per return. That's huge. We wouldn't know that if they weren't tracking time. So, again, th this helps us quantify the improvements that we're making as a result of the, the technology um, the, the, the technology implementation. Um, again, not an exhaustive list by any means, but here is typically where we see the biggest opportunities uh, for, our, for, for accounting uh, and bookkeeping firms. Another one down the bottom there, payments and accounts receivable. Um, it's, it's a huge opportunity. There's an enormous amount of time. I'd, I'd really, if you do track time, I'd really encourage you to go back and have a look at the firm's timesheets. And what you'll probably see is a massive chunk for administration that is probably higher than what you anticipated it to be. And if you dig into that, you're going to see a bunch of of the the tracking workflow, managing engagement letters, chasing signatures, asking for documents. Um, there's also going to be a big chunk of time in the payments and accounts receivable side. Uh, if if, uh, if if you're billing after the fact and if you're sending out invoices, et cetera. And so we're actually going to talk about could we get rid of accounts receivable uh, a little bit later on because that will free up your team's time, that will free up your time uh, significantly to focus on, I won't say much more valuable things because getting paid is actually really important, but it, but just the process and managing all of that, um, it, it will free up that time so that you can focus on much more uh, valuable activities such as um, helping clients and, and talking to clients about things like your tax planning and your your um your business planning etc cetera, etc cetera. uh free up your team's time to focus on documenting procedures of testing uh technology etc so COVID has, has for the most part forced us to adopt cloud-based technology and we, we certainly saw that um early on is that the adoption of um cloud technology different platforms different um different apps etc absolutely spiked um, but what I would challenge us to do now, and I was going to say now that we can take a breath, I'm not actually sure if we're, we're actually able to take a breath, um, but uh, we've got to ask the question, is it working for us? Are the tools that we implemented 18 months ago in a, at, at the start of a pandemic, are they working for us? 
I'm probably going to t contend that the answer is yes, because, you know, 18 months later, we're still here and we're still working away. But now is the real the opportunity to, again, as I said, take that step back and, and ask, are we getting the most out of it? Is there some additional functionality that we could get out of this that will help us um, uh, save more time? Alternatively, look, it's been clunky and it's been a bit manual. This is the upload, uh, the download and upload example, maybe. Um, so now is the opportunity to have a look at some of these technologies that we are using against those workflow, uh, against those processes and those tasks in your office. And we can take a look at, um, do we need to, uh, do we need to double down on training or alternatively, do we need to look at, um, do we need to look at something completely new? Um, and what I'd actually ask is let's do a quick poll question. What general ledger do you use to run your own firm? Um, is it zero? Is it MYOB? Is it Reckon? Is it QuickBooks Online? Or is it something else? Um, and just sort of the general ledger is a really good example because a lot of firms will stick with the general ledger despite the fact that they're supporting other general ledgers. Uh, they will stick with one and, and more often than not, there's a really good opportunity to improve uh, just your own internal processes by updating that general ledger um, into, into something that is more uh, more automated uh, and, and, and web based and more efficient. So quick poll question, just to make sure nobody's nodded off. Uh, let us know what general ledger do you use to run your own firm there? Is it zero, Myob, Reckon, QuickBooks Online or something else? Okay, what have we got there? Um, something else came out at 26%. So feel free to pop that into the chat section there, folks, as to what that is. Zero, 18%, Myob, 14%, Reckon, 1%, QuickBooks Online, 1%. Um, so I've got a bit of work to do, obviously, to, to convince you of the benefits of QuickBooks Online, but we'll do that another time because today we're talking about more efficient and more productive um, end of financial year. But 26% saying something else. So please do uh, put that into chat. I'm just going to close those poll results, open chat so I can see that. Oracle, SAP, Oracle NetSuite. Okay, so um, probably some of the larger um, uh, ERP type um, uh, general ledgers there, which is interesting. So thank you for that. Again, pop the pop the um, uh, pop that information into the chat, uh, and I'll share it with us as as well. So pack number four. I think this is what's really important. Uh, Rena said Microsoft Dynamics. So thank you very much. Um, SAP again. So we're looking. Actually, it's sort of interesting. We're seeing some quite large. Uh, GLs uh, being used here um, comparatively to a smaller business, um, not an accounting firm. Okay, that that makes probably more sense. Okay, let's um, let's keep going um, as we're talking about our client facing um, our client facing technology, our own internal technology. So we've got our spreadsheets of the different tasks, the different data that we need from our clients and the different tasks and processes within our own accounting firm. Now we've got to look at the technology that we have currently in place. We also overlay that with the, 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 what we covered off on the first section, which was, are there any manual processes? Are there any um, data entry processes? Do we, do we have to duplicate data entry into multiple different systems? And these are quick wins. Uh, if we are thinking about quick wins, these are quick wins for efficiency gains, looking at applications that will help us collect and process that data. And now what we've got, we've, if we've done all of that hard work, now we're going to sit down with our team and do a bit of a, a, the, the traffic light activity. So what technology will we stop using? Um, I can tell you that it is one of the most relieving, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but one of the most um, impactful things that you as a, a partner, um, as, a, a, as an owner of a firm can, can do is sit down with your teams and say, guys, what applications are, are, are really holding us back? What applications are slowing us down? Um, and let's look at, do we need to stop using those and find a substitute? Do we need to move our clients elsewhere? Um, and I, I would sort of put a, a, a big um, flag against anything that's desktop, anything that's not cloud-based um, and, and, and open APIs 
uh, that's something that we should put the, the big red light against because that's slowing us down. That's not allowing the free movement of, of information uh, through APIs and through integrations. That's, that's requiring download to CSV, upload CSV at the very least, if not actual duplication of data entry into multiple systems. Um, so I think that's one of the things that we need to think about, stop using. I actually might even say anything Excel, and I know that's a really controversial um, thing to say, but typically what we've done previously, and it's certainly something that we did in our accounting firm, is we created templates for our clients to fill out. More often than not, our clients didn't fill them out, but we became wedded to those templates. And so we were using the, the Excel spreadsheets to do a lot of the 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 organization of of our clients data and it stopped us from seeing what was out there at apps.com at the zero marketplace at the myob marketplace and, and it, i i think it definitely held us back and it certainly held a whole bunch of accounting firms back is that reliance on excel so i would think and and again i, I think i said it before uh workflow i see a lot of accounting firms managing their workflow through excel um, and it's, it's, it's not a pleasant experience and it's not the most efficient experience either. So I think that's something to be really, uh, be thinking about sitting down with the team. What are we going to stop using? And first thing is anything desktop. And if we're going to stop using it, what are we going to replace it with? Um, and who's the team that's going to assess and get out and talk to other accountants, talk to other practitioners about what are they doing for workflow management? What are they doing for um, for uh, engagement letters? What are they doing for payments, et cetera, et cetera? So I would suggest anything desktop, anything reliant on Excel, there are opportunities for us to stop using. And I think uh, opportunities for us to stop using um, and then identify uh, web-based applications, um, specific uh, applications that help us um, bring in the information or process the information and move it around efficiently. So stop using, uh, typically uh, some quick wins there. Continue using, um, this is what it, the, the yellow light. What are the, the things that we're going to continue using? I would contend, I mean, I, and I must admit, I came back to Microsoft when I joined Intuit and I was like, oh, wow. Microsoft's got a whole bunch of, of really great products within their Microsoft 365. Um, I was using just Excel and Word and PowerPoint. But if you actually think about Microsoft Teams, if you actually think about the, they've got a, um, a great task management, they've got a great um, project management tool. So they've got a whole suite uh, of, of things that you're all, you might already be paying for, but you're not getting the most out of it. And so Microsoft's the easy example. The challenge with Microsoft is they're not necessarily accounting specific, um, but I know that you've probably got a lot of accounting specific tools that you're not getting the most out of. Um, I, I, I will say, for example, QuickBooks Online Accountant, there's your own general ledger that you can use to run your own firm. There's free payroll included within it. Uh, and then even, even there's a, a very simple workflow task management tool for all of your clients. We'll talk about sort of the complexity and sophistication and that type of stuff. Um, but uh, uh, when we actually talk with a lot of our accounting customers, they didn't realize that there was a, a bunch of other features that sat within what they were already paying for or what they were already getting for free. Um, and so I, I, again, simple matrix uh, where we're looking at the, the, the tasks, the technology that we're using, um, are we happy with it? Uh, can we get it elsewhere or are we already paying for it with something else? Uh, so, can the, so workflow is typically the one that we see that um, a, a fair amount of is carbon, for example, it's a really powerful workflow and practice management tool, but people are really only scratching the surface of it. So, um, and, and that's what I, I, I sense with a lot of the, the workflow products is that we're really only scratching the surface of the power contained within them. The, the green one start using online payments if, and, and I do not mean just ACA, uh, I, don't, I don't mean just sort of putting your, your um, BSB and account details there and hoping that your clients will follow the, 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 the responses or the directions on the invoice. It's actually a, a robust 
payment processing system. It does cost money. Um, doesn't cost a huge amount of money, but it takes care of it and, and automates it for you. Um, and this is a part of getting rid of AR uh, that we need to think about. So for that continue using um, really important questions. And this is to ask the team to sit them down or sit them down or jump on a, a virtual meet, a meeting and, and look at the different technology applications that we're using to complete certain tasks. Are we getting the most out of it? Is there functionality we're not using? Really important one, will it meet our future needs? And you might say it might meet our future needs for the next tax season, for the next 12 months. So you know what, we're just going to live with it. But the nice thing about doing that is you've already flagged it for this time next year that you can work on it, that you can find out what's going on and look for, for better alternatives out there. Um, if you haven't, uh, you know, sort of the, the functionality that's, that's built into these applications just grows and grows exponentially um, each and every day. And so I would really encourage you is, is, is actually, who, who is your subject matter expert on let's just say all things QuickBooks or all things carbon or all things um, logic. Who is that subject matter expert that can go and learn all the new bells and whistles, all the new functionality that make your life much more uh, seamless and much more integrated, your accounting life, much more seamless and much more integrated. Because I can guarantee you if, if it's been if it's been, you know, three months, six months, 12 months since you've looked at some of these products, even in your own firm, I can guarantee you that um, that there will be new feature sets within that that if you that the the their implementation will bring about significant um, efficiency gains and the the books review example was just one in QuickBooks Online Accountant um, that that a lot of our pro advisors didn't know was available. Uh, but now they're starting to see the 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 time and efficiency saving. So spend some time finding out what's new in your own tool suite. Uh, and then look at if, if we've got any red lights, um, then we've got to look at how do we uh, how do we swap them out and what are we going to swap them out with. Be very intentional about new tools. It, it's really um, easy to be distracted by shiny objects. Um, as I said, you might already have it, and, and Microsoft was a really good example that you you, you there's certain functionality that you already have um, within a, a tool suite. Uh, that you purchased, and so maybe you've got duplication there. So um, you might already have it, uh, but you might just not know about it. So spend some time looking at the tools, getting up to speed with the what's new page, um, and and I think you'll be hopefully you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised by the amount of work that the the, the teams have put into de continued development of their product. Um, what I would say, if the the high functionality tools. They need proper training, um, and the, the good thing is, I know all of the certainly all the apps.com partners, QuickBooks. We've got a big training uh, and implementation group that can help. So, and I know anyone that has a, a really good accountants program um, that supports accountants, the, their implementation and their training is actually what's critical. Oh. So my decision matrix didn't come through there, but but basically what we can think about there is we have our functionality and our cost. Um, and so depending on the task that required, we might actually have a low functionality requirement. Um, and, 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 and we can basically plot the different pieces of software based on functionality and, and the cost associated with it. And that can help us make a decision. So for example, the, 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 the workflow tool within QuickBooks Online Accountant, the cost is free, I will admit the functionality is low. It's perfect for a small, medium, small accounting firm. I'll say small accounting firm, um, but it's included in what you've got. And as you're starting on this journey, it might cover the bases that you need. So, or alternatively, you might be looking for a, a, a warts and all type program that has high functionality. And again, high functionality requires that investment in training. So let's do that now rather than getting closer and closer and closer to uh, to our tax season. Hack number five, and we've, uh, we'll go through these, act well, actually, we'll, we'll go through these, the last two are pretty quick ones, so we'll be wrapped up within the, the next couple of minutes. So make sure you do get any uh, questions through to uh, into the, the chat section there. Scrap your accounts receivable. 
what I'd really encourage you to do, folks, and again, that table actually hasn't uh, that table hasn't uh, come through, unfortunately. Um, I, I'd be fascinated to find out how you you price your services. Uh, and I was going to ask you to put a, a tick in a particular box. So that actually hasn't come through, but not to worry. What I'd love to know is, do you do you price your services strictly by the hour and you you invoice after the after the fact, you bill your clients after the fact? Do you look at what's on the timesheet and then write up or down based on what's happened previously? Do you agree fees in advance and, and fix those prices? Uh, or is it something, a blend of all the above? And this is a really important part of if we want to scrap our AR, our accounts receivable, because again, there's an enormous amount of time locked up in the actual management of accounts receivable. Um, so if, if this is something that we want to do, we can start taking steps towards that today. And so what I would do is we've got to fix our fees. We it, It's really difficult to scrap our accounts receivable if we're billing after the fact. And so to scrap the, the accounts receivable, we've got to tackle fixed fees and we've got to implement fixed fees. And we can do that over the next uh, four or five months uh, without a problem. So let's, how do we do that quick start? This isn't a pricing webinar. Don't, don't, um, I, <laughs> and as it with, with, with six minutes to go, um, we're not going to cover all the nuances of pricing. But a really quick way to start is have a look at the client invoices over the last two or three years. Have a look, maybe you might extend that out over to three, four years because it's been a bit unusual. But what we found when we did this is unless there was a material change, that price, the, the fee, the bill, remained relatively consistent. Maybe some slight upticks just because of you know inflation, cost of living, et cetera. But for the most part, the services remain consistent. The business remain consistent. Revenue might have grown, so fees might have grown ever so slightly. Um, but for the most part, we could we could pretty well plot what this year's price would be based on what had happened over the last two to three years. And and what we decided to do in our accounting firm is is we went out to clients and said, assuming no material changes, and here's examples of material changes. Um, this, this is price will be for this very specific list of services. Um, and and here, here's the bill now. So rather than after the fact, here's the invoice now, and here's a little pay now button that you can that you can do that. We didn't get a big uptake on the pay now side of things. Um, most people paid at the, 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 the signing. So most people didn't prepay, but they certainly paid at the signing. And the nice thing is we didn't actually have to send um, any invoices out after the fact. Um, so in our first year, we did still send the invoices out and it set, so the, 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 that whole invoicing process did still take place. But we didn't have any accounts receivable because 90% of our invoices were paid when the client signed the either the engagement letter or when they signed the, um, the, the form, uh, when they signed the, the filing. So assuming no material changes, here are examples of material changes. For these services, your price will be X. You might add an incremental buffer on what's happened over the last two to three years, uh, but you'll be really surprised um, as to the client's response to that. Um, and it will be more positive than you, than you think. Um, engagement letter is critical. And if you haven't updated your engagement letters, it's really important that you're very clear with your scope. Um, provide examples of out of scope activity. Um, be very specific what you will do and, and, and provide examples of what you won't do. And, and if, if you do want us to do them, we're happy to do it, but we'll have to re, uh, reconfigure this engagement letter. Let's put a price into that engagement letter so that our clients have confidence. Remember that client experience that we were talking about, really important, and also the payment terms, including instructions. And I, I would contend that I, I would happily pay the couple of percentage points uh, to get the information um, to get the information from our clients there and then, rather than sending them the, the banking information and hoping that they will do that in a timely manner. If you're thinking about your engagement letters and your proposal process, we've got to make sure that it's mobile friendly. Our clients are running their business day to day on their mobile phones. They're out and about, they're collecting the kids, et cetera. Make it easy for them to read that scope of, of engagement on their, on their mobile. Make it easy for them to accept on their, their mobile. 
digital signatures are really critical. The, the, this idea of printing, scan, signing and scanning, that, that is just so far in the past now. We've got to make sure that we're, we're enabling our clients to do business with us easily and mobile friendly proposals, digital signatures and payment details all in that one process, really helpful. If we think about that decision matrix, there's a whole bunch of uh, tools that are out there. And I sort of think practice ignition is high on functionality, probably a little bit higher on cost. Um, Go proposal less on the functionality because it requires a different payment processing um, and, and probably a little bit lower on cost. Proposify, um, Quilla, probably lower on functionality, lower on cost. Uh, and then, so you, there's a whole bunch of tools that are out there that will help you do this, depending on what are the very specific things, tasks that you want to make sure that you're ticking off. And if you, if you could imagine a, a, a matrix there where we've got the cost on the left-hand side and the functionality increasing uh, uh, down the bottom towards the right, um, basically you'll see that different products will fit into, into that matrix. And you can sort of see what is it that we, we want this tool to do? Do we just want it to be able to get our engagement letters out and get them signed? Or do we want to go sort of from end to end from proposal all the way through to the payment processing side of things? Um, then, then we've got this application for that. But as I said, you might already have it in one of your other tools. So again, really important to go back and have a look. Hack number six. This is a quick one. Automate your schedule. Um, eliminate back and forth with clients. Uh, if you're not using Calendly or something like that, uh, there's a really good opportunity to help uh, improve the client experience by allowing your clients to choose when suits their schedule. Uh, you can block your own focus time. So I'm not taking appointments between 9 and 11, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, but basically the rest of the calendar is available and your clients can come in and select when works for them. It automates rescheduling, it automates reminders, um, but it allows your clients to choose a time specific for them when suits them. Um, and if you think again, if the, the amount of time that's being lost with back and forth phone calls, with back and forth emails, this is an amazing opportunity. And there's a bunch of scheduling tools out there. I just uh, used the example of Calendly. Um, that allows your clients to come on and look at when your meeting, like your when your meeting options are available, and then they can go in and, and do all of that. Hack number seven, the final one is pre-schedule your value add. Um, so you're going to be talking with your clients a lot over tax planning and and um, uh, probably more compliance based issues. Um, a bit like the dentist, make sure you're booking in your next three month or six month checkup. And let's meet after September or let's meet in September to discuss the cash flow plan, the business plan, the succession plan, next year's tax plan. Let's get the let's get the diaries out now and let's put it in. The the number of times that I've heard accountants say, um, I'll give you a call once it quietens down, never happens. So do it while you're there with your clients and pre-schedule those value adds and let them know, I'd love to sit down and talk to you about succession planning and, and what the exit of the business. Want to sit down and talk about cash flow, cash flow plan, cash flow plan. Let's get the diaries out and, and schedule some time now. Don't wait till once things quieten down because they'll never happen. So there they are, folks, seven productivity hacks. They all require a bit of work, so they're not Band-Aid solutions by any means. Um, but I think there's some really good opportunities for you to help on the accounting side of things. Folks, become a QuickBooks Pro Advisor and enjoy the perks. I won't go into it, but you can visit the intuit.me Pro Perks, and you'll be able to see all the benefits available uh, to, to CPA Australia members that want to join the Pro Advisor program. Uh, and Gavin, I'll hand back to you and say thank you very much. I'll, I'll have a quick look at the questions uh, and go from there. Thanks, Damien. We sort of run out of time, but um, I think we'll go, go over uh, by a few minutes so we just address some of the questions. So, uh, Mark has a question there on um, can you elaborate on good Microsoft apps we should be using? And then I'll yeah, let you sort of add it to that and said, oh, it depends on the version of Microsoft Office you might be using as well. 
Yeah, and, and I, Microsoft 365, the online version, uh, they've got a great project management tool. So that could be used for your workflow side of things. Um, obviously, Microsoft Teams, if you're paying for, for Zoom or, or one of the other applications, is a great conferencing and collaboration tool. Um, so in Microsoft 365, I would say task management, project management, and workflow, uh, as well as Microsoft Teams, I think that's a, it's a great substitute for Zoom, particularly if you're paying for it. Uh, Mark has a further question around um, how do you write how do you write scope of engagements when not billing fixed price when you're not billing at a fixed price? Yeah, really good question, Mark. Um, so what what is important is if if you are charging by the hour, you need to help the client understand and manage their expectations. So what are the things that you will be doing? But most importantly, what are the things that you won't be doing? Um, so that's what I think is really critical in terms of how do you write scope? I think it's manage your client expectations that we're going to, we're going to need to do some research. We're going to need to do some analysis. Um, and and it, again, the engagement by engagement is going to change, but it's helping just manage the client's expectations as to what's involved in preparing their tax return because um, small business owners, um, that th th they want that information as to what's actually going on. They want the information on the outcomes. And so fixed price really helps us be very specific about what we are doing and what we're not doing. Um, but if we're, if we're, if we're billing by the hour, uh, we have to be, we have to help our clients understand what's involved in preparing their financial statements, in preparing their tax plan, in preparing their, their cash flow forecast, for example. I think Damon, as you said, billing is a whole different seminar webinar in itself. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we, often we come across issues around um, clients becoming increasingly concerned about data security. So, how do you suggest members overcome that concern about clients sharing some of their data with them? Uh, I, I think this is where your application partners should really step up and should really be providing privacy policies, document, uh, document uh, security policies, making sure that they're share making it easy for you to share that information with your clients. So I think lean on your application partners, lean on your tech partners for this information. What level of security is there? Um, and then and, and talk to your, your application partners about, well, how do I how do I communicate that with my client? How do I build that this level of security? into into my my scope of engagement and and that's I, I think your technology partners should be able to help you come up with the language that you provide to your clients and i know as well um cpa australia and in, in their um tools and resources they have a whole bunch of things available as well and um mark has another question around billing and um uh, with fixed direct scheduled billing if you do extra work do you send another account and then another, um, you know, in, in addition to your regular monthly account. Uh, if, the, if the client knows that the work is additional, so, so that's what's really important there, Mark, is being, being very clear to say, here's what we agreed to do, which was the, this is the monthly, um, the monthly financial statements, X, Y, and Z. Uh, this extra work, which we've agreed to, that will be billed separately. And, and we see that a lot with, prior year cleanup, we bill that by the hour, but the stuff moving forward is on a fixed fee because we don't know what we don't know. If we've got to file prior year tax returns or something along those lines, if we've got to file international tax returns, we, 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 we might actually say it's a fixed price for your domestic return, but internationally, we're going to need to do some research and we're going to build that by the hour. So there, there are ways in which you can uh, pass out the engagement for, for fixed and then for for by the hour and for the most part the clients were like yeah that makes sense it's a bit complicated it's yep so no no problems whatsoever it's just about managing expectations and limiting surprises I totally agree Dan. i think that's a great bit of advice like i think we'll leave it there so a big thank you to damien great uh, great head from intuit and a big thank you to intuit for sponsoring today's webinar uh thank you to everyone for your participation and for your attendance today, and I'll hand back to Linda to close off the event. Amazing. All right, I might just jump in there and say a big thank you to both 
Damien and Gavin for a fantastic webinar. Everyone, that does formally conclude today's webinar. So if you're ready to leave us now, click on the cross on the bottom panel. Upon exiting, you will be automatically redirected to a feedback form. Now it does initially take you to an external site message. Go ahead and click the blue continue button just to go through to the feedback form. It only takes about 30 seconds to complete. However, it's really beneficial for CPA Australia as well as our panel, so please leave us your thoughts. Now just also letting you know that everybody will also receive a copy of today's webinar recording and it'll be sent to you via email within the next 12 hours. Thanks once again everyone, stay safe and hope to see you in another webinar. Thanks a lot.